Hello and welcome, my name is Terry. In this video, I'm going to go through Form 4 at Maths. Textbook question for Chapter 8, Vector Mastery Practice. Now, if you enjoyed this video, can you like, subscribe and leave us a comment. So let's get straight to the first question. Eh? Now, the diagram on the right shows three vectors, A, B and C. They are not parallel, so you're supposed to express vector x, y in terms of a and b. So if you want to express vector x, y in terms of x and b, now here I probably just zoom in, you can see x, y means we have to go from this point here to over this point. Now using vector a and vector b. Now a is defined as a one by one diagonal going to, uh, if you like, we call it a north west right so i'm going to go a first yeah which is this direction okay followed by b b is going northeast yeah but it's twice as long so in this case to go from a uh, x to y we have to go 1a minus uh, plus 1b yeah? 1a plus 1b so just write your answer like this uh, you can just write part a here vector x y is 1a plus 1b hmm? very simple okay how about vector x z now in this case x c x and z we are expressing in terms of b and c that means we have to use b c here we're not going to use a right so to go from b uh, x to z using b c we can use b first you can use c first doesn't matter Okay, I'm thinking I cannot use a full B because, okay, let me use a different color, use a yellow color, right? Because if I want to go to Z, right, you can see a Z is only at this level, right? Okay, so if I do 1B, it will be above that. This is 1B, right? So we need to do half of B. This is half of B. And you can see C is moving to the right. So now I'm moving to the left, right? And in fact, C is two boxes to the right. Now I'm going four boxes to the left. So in this case, we are actually going through negative 2C. Yeah, going left. So it's half B minus 2C. Yeah, fairly simple. Okay, so XZ is half B minus 2C. I think textbook make a uh, mistake here because the answer at the back is given. If I'm not mistaken, the answer is given as a minus c. Yeah? Uh, you can also use a minus c, but this question asks us to give our answer in terms of b and c. That means you do not want to use a. You only want to use vector b and c. All right? Okay. Just to take note. All right. Let's move on to question number two. Okay. So question two. Given that PQ is three k a minus four b and x y is 4a plus 8b if vector pq is parallel to xy find the value of k so i'm sure you've seen a lot of questions like this eh? when two vectors are parallel we can express the first vector as a multiple of the second vector in this case pq normally we use a symbol lambda equals to, pq is equals to lambda xy so my pq is 3ka minus 4b my lambda is 4a plus 8b so here we can multiply the lambda inside one by one and then we compare the vector one by one now let's compare vector a with vector a let me highlight for you this is vector a the coefficient is 3k and 3k is now 4 lambda notice we have two unknowns so we can't solve it so i'm going to leave it as equation number one then i'm going to compare vector b now look at the coefficient of vector b the coefficient in this case is minus 4 and this on the right hand side is 8 lambda so minus 4 equals to 8 lambda now we can solve for lambda first negative 4 divided by 8 lambda is negative half now we sub inside equation 1 so 3k is 4 substitute negative lambda inside so this is negative 2 you just divide by 3 k is minus 2 over 3 okay still fairly simple right okay let's look at question number 3 okay so given that p equals to mi minus nj is a unit vector in the direction of p express 
m in terms of n. Now, I hope you remember what is a unit vector. Unit vector is a vector with a magnitude of 1. You can have any vector that goes in any direction. Yeah, When you divide by its magnitude, you're actually getting per unit of that vector. So that means each vector unit, or each unit vector, sorry, it will have a magnitude of 1. All right. So here, let's just take unit vector of p. I already say it's a unit vector, so we don't have to put a cap. Put a hat on, just let it be like this. The magnitude is 1. And remember, to find a magnitude for a vector, we take the x component. This is i in j format. This is your x component m. You square it. Your y component is negative n. You square it. Put the square root over the result equals 1. Now here I'm going to square both sides, left and right hand side. So the square root disappear. Negative n, if you square it, becomes positive n. So if I want to make Malaysia as a subject m, I'm going to bring n square over 1 minus n square. And I'm going to square root it. 1 minus n square. Yeah. Here we don't have to put a plus minus. Uh. Yeah. Normally we just write. When you are expressing n times n, just leave out the negative. Okay. So m equals to 1 minus n square. That is question number 3. Okay. Moving on to question number 4. Here, your given vector u is ki plus hj. Vector v is i minus 4j. And magnitude u plus v is now square root k square plus h squared. We are supposed to express h in terms of k. Okay, first of all, let us find out what is u plus v. So let's take ki plus hj at up with i minus 4j. Okay, now we know i and i component, we can add them up. So however, this is uh, unknown, k is an unknown. So ki plus 1i is just k plus 1 bracket i. Can't at them the number because you have unknown so to leave it in terms of k so it's k plus one and similarly for j this is h minus four bracket j I just factorize the j out okay so the magnitude of this u plus v right it is given as this which is um, square root of k square plus h square and to find magnitude of this vector we'll just take k plus one square here can you see this is your k plus 1, your x component, and your y component, h minus 4, you square it, put the square root over, the result is k squared plus h squared. So what I need to do is to find h in terms of k. To do so, I need to square both sides. And I think we can just expand the bracket here. This is k squared plus 2k plus 1. This is h squared minus 8h plus 16. The result is k squared plus h squared. Now, notice that we can cancel the k square with k square, and we can cancel h square with h square, right? So now you're left with 2k minus 8h plus 17 equals 0. Since you're finding h in terms of k, I'm going to bring the 8 over. 2k plus 17 equals to 8h. Divide them. So I'm going to write h on the left. 2k plus 17 over 8 on the right. So there you go. We've got h in terms of k. Alright, that is number 4. Moving on to question number 5. Okay, so here we are given coordinate point A, 3, 4, vector AB, 5, 12, vector BC, 10, minus 3. You're supposed to find unit vector in the direction of AC. So, if you know AB and BC, we can just find AC by going from A to B, plus b to c right so in this case your a b is 5 12 your b c is 10 minus 3 if you put it together you get 15 and 9 now here there are two ways to find unit vector right um, now i think the most common method that a lot of people would do is that they will go and find the magnitude first as in okay let me write down here now this is not my favorite method because I feel it's longer, you find the magnitude of AC, which is 15 square plus 9 square square root. And this will give us square root 306, right? Now, what is unit vector? Unit vector is a vector divided by its own magnitude. But normally, we don't write like this. Huh? We, don't, we don't write like this. We don't put an arrow and then with a cap on top. So um, up to you. You want to write in words, also can. I'll just let it be you and call it unit vector, right? My vector here is 15, 9. 
Now, normally, again, we don't divide by 309, 306 this way because it's, it's just, uh, it doesn't look right. Yeah, normally, we just multiply with 1 over 306. Now, the problem with this is that this expression can be simplified further. That is, you know that 306, we can actually write as 9 times 34. So you've done this in the chapter cert, simplification of cert, right? So we can actually square root 9 and get 3. This is square root 34. And 15 and 9, we can actually take out 3, left with 5 and 3. As you simplify further, you get 1 over 34, 5, 3. Now, by right, we should simplify to the lowest term whenever you find unit vector. Uh, I think the textbook answer gave the answer as this, right? But this is actually the final answer, the better answer, okay? So, but for me to overcome this, right, I want you to understand that two vectors, when they're parallel, they actually share the same unit vector. It doesn't matter where this vector is going this way, this vector is going this way, they're parallel, they're going longer, they're going further. The unit vector is, we're measuring one unit of this in this direction. If I take this vector and I take a unit of this, they're actually the same, exactly the same. They're equal vector, right? Although two vectors are parallel, the unit vectors are always the same. So what I'll do is I'll take out 3 from here, I'll get 5, 3. Now take note, if I want to find unit vector for AC, I just find unit vector for 5, 3, 5i five plus 3j. So my unit vector will be 1 over square root 5 square plus 3 square, 5, 3, and this will give us 1 over square root 34, 5, 3. So in my opinion, this will be much easier. So you don't have to go and find the magnitude, then you simplify the, the third and then cancel further. Yeah, We factorize right from the start. By finding the unit vector of 5, 3, we are actually finding the unit vector for AC. Yeah? The end result will be the same. Okay, we also need to find part B, which is the coordinate point C. Now, to find coordinate point C, let us find OC by taking OA plus A. C. Since I already have AC, eh? I already have vector AC. My vector AC is 15, 9. Okay, so I'm going to write OA as 3, 4. Remember, in coordinate system, we write 3, 4 horizontally this way. Eh? But when you write in column vector, we write vertically. It's the same as 3i plus 4j. Now we add 15, 9. The result is 18, 13. But since you're writing the coordinate, this is called the position vector of O, of C, right? We are not finding position vector, we are finding the coordinate of C. So we just write horizontally like this with a comma 18, comma 30. Okay. Moving on to number 6. Alright, diagram shows a right uh, triangle PQR, okay? And you're given PQ equals to 3i, PR equals to 2j, RS, SQ is 2 to 3, RS is 2, SQ is 3. You're supposed to express RS in terms of i and j. Now we can see RS is actually a fraction of RQ. So it's actually 2 over 5. See, this is 2. The whole thing is 5. Yeah. So RQ we can find, it's fairly simple, we just go this way down, minus 2J plus 3I. Okay, I'm just going to write this for you up, minus 2J plus 3I. Now as we can times inside one by one, okay, maybe I rearrange this because just so you know, the textbook leave your answer in this way, but it's actually better to uh, expand the bracket and write 6 over 5I minus 4 over 5J. Okay, yeah, not difficult. Uh, I don't think they should put a brain here because you don't need big brain to solve this. This is quite easy, right? Okay, let's look at number seven. All right, uh, this one you need to use a bit of brain. Okay, now, diagram shows a uh, trapezium BCDE with DC equals to U, EB equals to V, ED is half of BC. So express BC in terms of U and D. Now I have two ways to do it. Yeah. Okay. Let me zoom in a bit to see the tri the trapezium. Okay. We know that D E D is half of B C. The problem is 
I can't go from B to C this way. I mean, trying to go this way, like like you try to go this way, you got stuck. Okay, I, I don't have any vector ED, so I can't move around, right? Yeah, and I only know these two vectors. I don't know anything else. So in this case, what I would do is I would have to assign a symbol for, let's say, ED. Okay, so I'm going to let ED be, uh, what can we use? W, since you have UV, maybe the next one I put W. So your BC, um, okay, I'm, I'm going to use BC, like, since we are going to find BC, right? Since I'm going to find BC, sorry. So I'm going to let BC be W. And your ED will be half W. I'm going to show you two methods. Right? This is the first method, all right? So that means this is W, this is half W. Okay, now we have vectors. We have lines. Yeah, we have uh, vectors on the line. So we can go from B to C using, say, B to... I'm going from B to C. Yeah? I can go B to E, followed by E to D, followed by D to C. Now, B to E, we're going in the opposite direction. Huh? For B, B is going up, upwards this way. Yeah? yeah, I'm going opposite. So it's minus V. Then I'm going up here, plus half W, then a plus DC, DC is just you are going this way, you. And BC itself is W. So when I bring this over, I'm going to get half W equals to U minus V. Yeah? Now notice I put negative V at the back, U in front. Since W is BC, I'm looking for BC, right? So I just times 2, so it's 2U minus 2V and therefore BC is 2U minus 2v okay so it's quite easy to understand right using substitution we let bc be w then we can actually form the vectors and find w then replace w with bc okay this is one way now i have another way to show you uh, now using diagram but this diagram is small so i'm going to uh, redraw for you another one another diagram um one more thing is that i think the this line here, uh, the line DB is making it confusing. If the line DB is not there, probably can see even clearer. Okay, so I just draw this like this. All right. Now, okay, my DC is a bit too, too long. Okay, let's just redraw a bit higher here. Okay, so this is B, C, D, and E. Okay, this is vector v this is vector u oh, sorry my diagram looks a bit out i, I actually uh, magnify a bit yeah because you know if you were to draw this line across right ed doesn't look like half of bc isn't it it doesn't look like half of it right so doesn't the, the diagram doesn't make perfect sense so what i do is you notice i actually draw closer here it looks more like half of it so and i'm going to call this uh, b c d e uh, let me call it vf boyfriend so we know this is vector, uh, well, if this is vector, okay, sorry, I'm drawing the wrong, uh, this is the correct side, this is, this is V, sorry. My U and V looks alike, sorry, yeah, it looks about the same. I draw another one, this is vector U. Okay, clear right now? Now, I want to go, this is vector 2, huh? I want to go from B, to uh, B to D first, right? Um, B, should I say B to F? Okay, sorry, B to F first. Now, to go from B to F, look at the diagram. I'm going this way, this way. So BF is minus V plus U. We know these two are equal length, right? So therefore, this and this are parallel, and not only that, they are actually equal vector, right? And this is equal length as well. So BF and DE are actually the same, right? In fact, DE, uh, ED is half of BF, sorry, ED is half of BC, so ED must be the same as BF, where F is the midpoint of BC. So if I can read BF, I can read BC. BC is twice of this, right? Just expand the bracket 2u minus 2v. There you go. You got the same answer. 
is even shorter. However, if your diagram is uh, drawn clearly, right, it's very easy to see, right? If I want to go from B to F, I just go. Uh, let me highlight for you one time. This way, better use red color, clearer. This way, this way, I got BF. Then I double it, I get BC. All right, that is question number seven. Okay, moving on to question number eight. All right. So in this diagram, you have a regular hexagon, okay? Okay, this one I may have to zoom in a little bit because the diagram is a bit too small to see. All right, so the first factor I'm finding, yeah, you're given, by the way, FA is A, FB is B. I'm finding vector A, B, okay. So I'm just going to use the diagram, huh? vector A, B. So to go from A to B, um, now every time I draw, I will have to, I will have to erase it, otherwise it's... Too, there are too many lines, a bit confusing. So I'm going to go this way first. Huh? I'm going to go minus A plus B. Right? This is vector AB is minus A plus B. Okay? Simple. Okay. Roman number two. How about FO? Okay, I'm going to rub this off. How about FO? If I want to go from F to O, uh, in fact, I, I just extend, yeah, I go, okay, sorry, this way, B minus A, right? Or you can say, FO is actually exactly the same as AB, because they are, this is a regular hexagon. FO is actually the same as AB. A regular hexagon, if we join together, this vector this line this line they're actually the same right but if you do not want to do that you're not sure about that then you can just go f to b b to a b to a is negative a so it's just b minus a notice it's the same as a b yeah? a b is minus a plus b f o is b minus a they are actually the same right you can just rearrange put b in front negative a at the back Okay, the next one is FC. Okay, FC, well, we can just go one more time, or you can use FO plus OC, right? You can go FO plus OC if you like. Um, now, OC and FO, um, or should I say this way? FO, look at the diagram, FO is this way. OC is this way. They are actually equal vector, right? So, can I say FO, FC is twice of FO, therefore is 2 times of B minus A, which is 2B minus 2A, right? Now, if you don't want to do that, you'll say, oh, I'm going to go one round, I'm just going to do this way, uh, let me highlight this way, uh, B minus A, right? Oh, so a bit ugly, B minus A, then you... A bit, a bit long now, I will say B minus A minus A. That means it's B minus 2A. Isn't this minus 2A? Minus 1A minus 2A. Then plus 1 more B. So you still get 2B minus 2A. Fair enough. 1B, 1A, 2A, both negative A, 1B. You still get FC. Now remember, in vector, the most important thing is the starting point and the final position. Right? You can go anyway. As long as you can reach the final destination. Okay, how about vector B, C? I want to go from B to C. Um, well, we can go B to F, F to C. Yeah, uh, you, you can just use the result. I think if you use the result, it's faster. Yeah, or do you want to use um, minus 2A plus B? Okay, okay, up to you. Okay, let me show you. One way is going this way. This is minus 1A, minus 2A, isn't it? can't see sorry minus 2a right minus 1 minus 2a then I go right this is 1b so it's minus 2a plus b okay if you want to use the result from the earlier part yeah also can yeah you may want to use b to e, b to f f to c also can since I already have vector fc okay next vector FD, Roman 4, FD, okay, to go from F to D, um, well, we can go 
zigzag as in b minus 2a plus b minus a yeah b minus 2a plus b minus a so this will give us 2b minus 3a you can even use fc plus cd yeah if you wanna fc plus cd because i already have fc right i have fc over here you just have to plus cd cd is going down these two are exactly opposite so it's minus a you can do that as well okay up to you so i'll just show you this in other now next and the last one is vector ad okay roman this is roman 6 ad how do you go from a to d well i can go um zigzag too many times maybe i do a to f f to d right yeah a to f f this is i already have fd i already have af right so i can do a to uh, a to f f to d af is minus a fd is 2b minus 3a answer 2b minus 4a now again uh, you want to do long way so can long way is minus a plus b minus 2a plus b minus a yeah minus a plus b minus 2a plus b minus one more a so total to b minus 4a okay so that is your part a okay let's move on to part b okay state the relationship between a b and f c okay i've got a b i've got f c so now you can start anywhere maybe i start with f c because because i can see uh, my f c here is a multiple of b minus a yeah i can take out two left with b minus a and what is b minus a b minus a is actually my a b right so f c is two times of a b or should i say a b is half of f c so that is the relationship between a b and f c okay so c okay determine whether a c and f d are parallel okay i think geometrically we can see they are, they are parallel a c is this line here right uh f d is this line here in fact they are not just parallel they are equal vector they are moving in the same direction they have the same magnitude they are actually equal vector uh, but we can see from here maybe i list up for you my a c have i got my a c earlier a c my a c Okay, I need to calculate my AC. Yeah? So I can go AC is minus A plus B minus 2A plus B. Yeah, minus A plus B minus 2A plus B. All right, my AC is 2B minus 3A. Correct? And look at my FC. FD, sorry. My FD here is also... 2b minus 3a so ac is now equal to fd yeah all right so remember if a vector first vector is a multiple second vector normally we use the symbol lambda ac equals to lambda fd if i can find the exact value of lambda meaning they are parallel all right now in this case your lambda is what your lambda is one yeah at ac equals to one fd that means they're equal right so since the question asks you determine whether they're parallel yes answer is yes they are parallel yeah okay uh, if they ask you what's the relationship in words they now say they are equal vector okay so that is number eight let's move on question number nine okay now here we have the position vector of a city a is minus 10 i plus 10 j and position vector of city b is 10 i minus 11 j the position vector uh, position of city a b c they are collinear and the distance between a and c is two times distance a to n b okay maybe i draw it out huh? so this is your vector a this is your vector b they say a c is twice a b so that means this is one and one that means b is the midpoint of a c you're given vector o a now i I like to use column vector, but you can write in ij, yeah, no problem. I think the text will give answer in column vector 
and uh, in high level studies also, yeah, high level college mathematics, we, we, we don't write IJ, so it's very annoying. You have to write it, you have to underline it, yeah, there's a lot of work, right? And yeah, it is uh, very annoying. I, I I'll just use column vector, all right? So I list out these two column vector, and first of all, I want to find vector AB. Now, for me, AB, I will use OB minus OA. Now, I know a lot of people uh, still not very familiar with this. Uh, the idea of uh, expressing AB in terms of position vector OB and OA. So, let me just draw the diagram for you. Generally, if I want to go from A to B, right, I have to go from A to O plus O to B. So, AB is AO plus OB. Since AO is the negative of OA, OA is going up, AO is going down, so it's a negative vector, right? So we just rewrite this as OB minus OA. Now this applies to all types of vector. If I give RS, it will be what? OS minus OR. If I give you PQ, it will be OQ minus OP. Yeah, second letter respect to O minus the first letter respect to O. Yeah, I hope you'll know how to do this directly. I don't have to like do step by step. Yeah, but if you insist you don't write AO plus OB, you can go ahead, all right? Okay, I know OB. 10 minus 11. I know OA minus 10, 10. So put it together, I got 20 minus 21. That is vector AB, right? So I've got vector AB. Now, how do you find the distance between them? Now, the distance is, in this case, this is the magnitude. So the magnitude AB is 20 square plus minus 21 square square root. It gives us 29. Now, this unit is in kilometer. So I just write km. And finally, how to find vector OC? Very simple, since they say that AC is twice the length. So I want to go from O to C. So I'm, I'm just like putting a random point here, O. So to go from O to C, I can go O to A, A to C, right? So O to A, A to C. OA is just minus 10, 10. AC is twice the length of AB. I know AB, right? AB is 20 minus 21. Okay, so I'm going to put it together. This is minus 10, 10 plus 40 minus 42 gives us 30 minus 32. Okay, that is question number 9. Okay, moving on to question number 10. Diagram shows, yeah, diagram right shows a quadrilateral OA. BC, so M is the midpoint of AC, so this is what equal length. OM, OB is 2, is to 3. OM, OB. Now, if the, o, the whole thing OB is 3, then MB must be 1, alright? And you're given vector OA, you're given vector OC, and vector CB, right? So, number 1, express in terms of U and V vector AC. So, if I want to go from A to C, uh, we want U and V, uh, that means we cannot use K, uh, don't, don't want to use BC. Uh, I have to go AO plus OC. Now, you can also use OC minus OA, yeah, the method I mentioned just now. But I think it's quite easy to use the diagram. This is this way, this way. But the first one you notice is opposite, uh, so we need to use negative. Uh, negative 3U minus 2V plus OC is 9U plus 2v answer 6u the minus 2v plus 2v cancel out so it's just 6u how about vector om okay om is 2 over 3 of ob can you see um this is 2 the whole thing is 3 yeah in fact you can see this uh, from here so i will just write 2 over 3 of ob and ob um we can go from, but we, sorry, 2 over 3, okay, sorry, I, I shouldn't do this first because this one will have in terms of k, sorry, I should use without k because this is in terms of u and v, no k, sorry, so I go O to A, A to M, okay, O A is 3u plus 2v, A M is half of A C, right, so I know A C, so I'm going this way and maybe I, for you this way this way i'm going the green line right 
So I will go 3u plus 2v plus half ac. My ac hmm, is just 6u. So this is 3u. 3u plus 3u is 6u. So it's 6u plus 2v. All right, this is part A. Part B, you're expressing OB in terms of U and V. Okay, I need to find OB first. Okay, so the first method is this. We know OB is longer than OM, yeah? Because they, you want U and V, so I can use the result from part A, OM. It's actually 3 over 2. Can you see the red line? It's 3 over 2 of OM. Since I know OM, so it's 6U plus 2V, yeah, you multiply inside, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9U, 2 cancel out with the 2 outside times 3, I got 3V, 9U plus 3V. Okay, finally, you want to express OB in terms of K. Now, the one in terms of K, we have to use, say, this way, this way, right? OC, CB, right? O to B will be O to C, C to B. O C is 9U plus 2V. C B is 3KV. If you put it together, you get 9U plus 2 plus 3KV. Okay, I got vector O B in terms of K already. Now, we don't find the value of K. So to find the value of K, we want to compare the two versions of O C. O B that we got. The first version of O B is this one. The second version of OB is this one, right? So now, and when you compare, I think we just compare your coefficient of V, would you, right? Because your coefficient of U, they are the same. They're both nine. This is three. This is two plus three K. So by comparison, three equals two plus three K. Three K is one. K is one over three. All right, okay, we got two more to go. Question number 11. Okay, this one I need to zoom out a little bit. Don't have enough space. Okay, so for question 11, so here we have a housing area that is in the form of rectangle OABC. Okay, building D is on OB, building E is on OA, OD is 3 quarter of OB. That means this is... 3, the whole thing is 4, this is 1, 3 to 1, eh? and then OE, OA is 1 is to 2. That means this is 1, the whole thing is 2, this is 1. So E is actually the midpoint, right? 1 and 1. Eh? So what else? Uh, e, BY is half of OA. So this is 1, this is 2, the ratio is 1 to 2. Okay, now vector OA, OA is 4A. So if the whole thing is 4A, this should be 2a, the whole thing is 4a, so it's going to be 2a, 2a. Vector OC is 4c. Because this is a rectangle, we can transfer this over. This is going to be 4c, and automatically this is 2c because the ratio is 2 is to 1. Okay, so first thing is label all the information on your diagram. Okay, next I'm finding vector OB to go from O to B. I can go O to A, A to B. So, yeah, uh, must I highlight for you? O to A, A to B, this way. Yeah, so this is vector. Um, maybe I remove it, huh? otherwise, too many lines later. 4A plus 4C. Okay, second vector that you're finding is vector OD. So, to find OD, we know OD is 3 quarter of OB. Can you see from here? OD is 3 quarter of OB. I know OB already, so sub in 4A, 4C, you get 3A, 3C. Okay, that's Roman 2. Roman 3, I'm finding vector OY. Okay, OY is easy because to go from O to Y, I can just go, maybe I show you here, this way, this way, that's OY, right? So it's just 4A plus 6c yeah, is 4c plus 2c is 6c. All right, max Roman 4, e, d, to go from e to d, uh, sorry, e, d first, right? Okay, I need to go e to o, 
and then O to D. You can use OD minus OE. Eh? Alright, I'll do E to O, O to D. E to O is minus 2A eh? because I'm going um, this way, this way, right? E to O, O to D. Alright, so E to O, O to D. OD is 3A plus 3C. Answer A plus 3C. Okay. Now, second part, prove that E, D, Y reside on the same line. So we call it collinear. Now, we don't know whether they're collinear or not. So uh, I'll just uh, draw this line here, E, D, Y. Okay, sorry, sorry, my line is not very straight, right? So it's like, whoa, like this, okay. So let's find E, D, and E, Y. Now, when it comes to collinear, you can use any combination. You can use E, D equals lambda, D, Y, if you like. ED equals to lambda EY or maybe DY equals to lambda EY. Now for me, I'll do it based on uh, two things. Huh? Sometimes you know what ratio you're finding, that's one. Another thing is what information that you already have. So I already have ED, right? I already have ED. Okay, so I think I would pick the one involving ED. But between EY and DY, which one is easier to find? I think EY is easier to find, right? EY is just this way, this way, right? So I think we'll just choose ED, EY, ED, EY, okay? So uh, I, I'm going to wrap all this off. I'm going to just use ED equals to lambda EY, yeah? So since I know ED, ED is A plus 3C. EY is 4A plus 6C, yeah? Uh, sorry, 2A, not 4A, yeah? 2A, okay, 2A plus 6C, now we can factorize them, now notice we can take out 2, lambda, A plus 3C, this is 3, and since these two are actually the same, we can actually cancel them off, yeah, so you're left with 1, 1 equals 2 lambda, lambda is half, if I can show that ED is half of EY, right? Number one, if I can express the first vector in terms of multiple second vector, meaning they are parallel. Now, on top of that, we have E is a common point. Since E is a common point, therefore, we say E, D, Y reside on the same line yeah or you can say collinear all right last question question number 12 number 12 this is very similar to one the past year question right okay diagram show uh the position direction of boats yeah belongs to arrow ben and raju in a solar boat competition arrow and ben's boat uh, move in the direction uh, same direction as stream the velocity of the stream is this uh while the velocity of arrows uh, boat is this here, Ben's boat is this. Okay, actually there's a name of it in this, uh, I mean, in, uh, what they call that uh, uh, IGCSC at maths. They actually learned this previously. We call it velocity in still water than vel an actual velocity. For example, let's say your boat goes this way. Yeah, This is called velocity in still water. We say boat slash water then the water may flow in this direction so this velocity of water so this is what we call the actual velocity or they call it resultant velocity yeah? the resultant factor so but in this context we are uh, taking this as the velocity in still water still water means without water without current so it's moving in this direction this is for ro this is for band but if you factor in the water yeah the water the current is flowing in this direction so then your resultant will be something else so we're going to add them up right so okay now let's see the first one huh? i want to find the resultant velocity of arrows boat and band's boat so i'm going to call it va la va for arrow now the initial arrows velocity uh, is 3i plus j the current is i 
1 over 3j. We lost here the stream. Eh? So you add up, you get 4i plus 4 over 3j. Okay, now you can even write in column vector form. It's, perhaps it's easier, right? Then velocity of then is now 6i plus 2j plus the current i plus 1 over 3j, the water. So it's 7i plus 7 over 3. Yes? 2 plus 1 over 3 is 7 over 3. Okay, so I've got this too. The next thing is you want to find the difference between the speed of two boats. Okay, now there are many ways you can do it. I can find the magnitude straight away. But I'm thinking, right, I see, the way I see, both can also be factorized. So I'll take VA, RO, I take out 4, left with I plus 1 over 3J. I take band, 7, I plus 1 over 3J. Notice the same thing, right? They are actually parallel, they're moving in the same direction. Okay, in the actual past year question, they actually say how many times velocity of B compared to A, something like that. But here, uh, we are not finding the how many times velocity is bigger, we are finding the difference in the velocity. So, number one, I, I don't want to do a lot of work. So, what I do is I know that I square uh, for I, sorry, maybe I write this down huh? for 1i plus 1 over 3 square square root. Uh, the magnitude, okay, should I write this down for you? Okay, maybe I write like this. Huh? VA, the magnitude of RO is 4 square root 1 square plus 1 over 3 square. So this is 4 square root 10 over 9. Right, okay, square root 10 over 9, if you use a calculator, is square root 10 over 3. So there are many ways that uh, you, can, you can actually just leave your answer in decimal, use your calculator, I'll just write 10 over 3. Then I take velocity of band, yeah, the magnitude is 7, square root is, it is going to be the same, 10 over 3, with the square root, so 10 over 3, sorry, this is 7. Okay, so we're going to find the difference, so the difference will be 7 square root 10 over 3, minus 4 square root 10 over 3, which is just 3 over square root 10 over 3, which is root 10. Now, you can leave it in decimal 3.163 meter per second. Okay, okay, sorry, I still got part B. Righteous boat deviated from the path. Given that velocity of righteous boat is this, we are finding the unit vector of the resultant of his boat. Okay, the unit vector, before that we find velocity of Raju, Raju of a small arrow, uh, is Initial velocity is 2i minus 4 3j plus the velocity of the water. This is going to give us 3i minus j. Okay, remember what is unit vector? Unit vector is a vector divided by its own magnitude. So if you simplify this, okay, this will give us 3i minus j over square root 10. Oh, Okay, yep. Oh, that's the end of this chapter. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Again, if you enjoyed this video, and uh, kindly like and subscribe if you want to find out more about our uh, learning material, our classes, right? We have a lot of this. It's available on Shopee. You can contact us, get in touch with us, or find us at www.delity.edu.my. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.